doing. That's that's part of the work is is making those steps and accepting that a lot of people will continue to be NPCs or zombies or absent, but that doesn't mean that you have to be. Um, a lot of what we consume, I mentioned this earlier, is what makes up who we become and who we are. And it is the discipline and it is the self-control and it's being grounded and present and mindful and it is exhausting and it's so hard. And I've been doing it for like two years now and it is so difficult from someone who lived in chaos and lived in disassociation and couldn't be present. But uh, if I want to be this person that I know I can be, I have to make do that work and be that person. And it is going to take control and discipline. And then people will see that and be influenced by me. And I know I have an influence on people. I know people influence me. Um, it's it's it, it starts with us, you know. It starts with people who have that calling. If I need to be a leader, I'm going to be a leader. Then how can I be the best leader? Not necessarily a superior leader to other people. It's not a competition, but in your eyes of who is your best self, and do you want to live up to the occasion of being your best self? And then you can you know influence the people if you can be like this too. You can be happy, and you can live the life you want to live. And you don't have to settle for this day-to-day -day routine. And those people who will get it will get it, you know. You can't change people who don't want to change, but you can influence people. Um, I know that in college, I did a college paper on animal testing on cosmetics. And after that, it's like, a, I, I know that I didn't influence mass media, but it was crazy how I didn't see it being talked about before that college paper of mine. And I see it being a very common discussion now. And... Again, like I said, I'm not saying I am the reason for this giant mass awakening of how our cosmetics is being tested on and the cruelty connected. But I like to believe that like my tiny progresses and the steps that I make when I talk about it and I share it, it makes a ripple effect in society. And some people are tapped into that consciousness and the collectivity. Um, I just not everyone's capable of doing that work. And yes, okay. we are. Yes, we are. We are. It's, it's, it's not about whether we can, it's how we reach each other. The problem is that the Martin Luther King mentality, the, the, the Martin mentality was never going to work because it's never about one person. The reason why people get, get canceled is because they try to stick the necks out without understanding. People talk without the desire to understand first. And that's mm -hmm. the problem. The the only time that you can actually reach people, I don't care who you are, I don't care what your thoughts, your, your, your thoughts, your beliefs are. If I take the time to understand how you came there, I have a much better chance of influencing you to a different outcome than if I just talk to you about what I believe. And that is the, that is the goal. The goal is to understand what people are right now and be willing to appreciate where they are to the point where they understand that you understand them. Because once a person has that belief that you are there to focus on them, and in that moment, you, they are the most important person in that, in that relationship between you and them. When they understand that the dynamic between you two is where you, are under, you want to understand them before you seek to be understood, you have the highest chance of being able to connect with them. And through that connection, you can change the, the, the thought patterns that they have if it's something that that's more negative into something more positive and get them where they need to go. It's not whether a person is, is ready to capable. Everyone's capable. It's understanding where they are right now and then being able to understand if they want to make that change in that moment or what it's going to take for them to, to um, get to that point. Everyone can. It's just making sure that you reach them in a way where they want to. I don't try not to generalize. I agree with a lot of your points. I guess I've met some people and talked to people that some people will refuse every avenue to change. And I accept that reality can be part of also believing majority of people will. Um, I think everyone is capable of change. It's not that everyone will do that. And what I think you're also trying to say at the same time is having people be seen, that they're not just a ghost. I was just in Florida for New Year's Eve at a last minute spontaneous trip. I sat with someone and she said, you see me. I saw this woman, this capable, ambitious woman who impresses me to no end. It was now a dear friend of mine and just saw that she's gone through it and that no one took the time to hold that space for her and acknowledge her 
and challenge her enough to be like, I see you, I get you. And I believe I did reach her. I do think that we can see other people. I just try. Can I interrupt? I'm sorry. Um, I just want to add an actual uh, like real life experience. Um, Not Susie and Sally. So I've been um, on depression medicine once in my life. Um, I went through a dark, very dark season. And I thought that a doctor can help me. And I didn't have a smile on my face. I was depressed in bed. I didn't know what else to do in my life. Um, When I got on that medication, those thoughts of actual like suicide intensified. Like literally were telling me to just go, you know, do what I gotta do. Um, When I recognized that, I, I threw away all the pills. I said, I'm not going to be on this crap. So for me, I am hardcore against pharmaceuticals and all of that. So um, I went on a healing journey and that was in church. And uh, I believe that you can't give people what you don't have. You can, you can make like a fake mirage of fooling people, um, but you really can't get it. Like apathy and empathy are taught and learned by people. Um, what it boils down to is even like helping the community, right? So we have to figure out what our gifts are. Like, what are your gifts? What are you good at? What are you passionate about? Okay, go take that and go into the community. Yeah, it's awkward at first, but you have to put one foot in front of the other. And God has placed gifts in each and every one of you guys. So I know what I'm good at. You know, I'm good at helping. I'm good at cooking and um, just wherever else. And I'm, I'm always open for, you know, God leading me to wherever I need to go. Um, and that's just my obedience to him. Um, but like, we have to ask the question, like, what are the things that are relevant in each and every one of our communities? Um, food is always a big one because there are kids that are going hungry that didn't eat today. They're they're going to sleep hungry. Right. So yeah, we can live in our own little bubble and act like everything's all good just because it's good under your roof. But if you're not intentionally like stepping out of your own shell, um, what kind of impact are you ever gonna do in your life? To anyone, really. So for me, I have a lot of empathy towards people because I know like what I've gone through and the dark places that I've been. And like, I know what an act of kindness can do to someone and then you know encouraging someone could do to someone else because we really don't know yeah people can have a smile on their face but you don't know what they're thinking i just the other day had a childhood friend that took his own life yeah he was always smiling bubbly and happy but like checking in our friends on our friends and family is very important um so, I don't know. Um, anyway, so that's what I had to say. Well, actually, I was also going to get into the connection aspect of it all because that's exactly what I was talking about when I mentioned how, and and part of this is also taking accountability here. Recognize that within yourself before reaching out to others with it. As long as you're able to learn how to take accountability for yourself, and then you try to reach out to others with that just so they can understand your perspective on where that's coming from, that can be very effective, especially when you got people that are open to it, especially when you got people that's willing to open up to a, to a conversation like that. 
That's the beauty of being able to have conversations like this. That's the beauty as to why we're doing what we're doing right now because of the things that are discussed, the things that we talk about, and our life experience of what we go through individually so that collectively we have that connection. We have that one major agreement between all of us because we all go through different circumstances. We have different things going on for ourselves, different things going on in our lives. But the one thing that remains the same is that when we come together like this, that's what makes a community. That's what makes a difference. Being able to talk about things like this in a manner where it feels like it's a conversation and not an overheated argument. It's a conversation to the point where it feels like you have that connection with others and you receive that connection from others you'll be able to see life in a whole different light. You'll be able to still feel that hope that there can be things that are good in the world. We just got to find it. We got to look for it. And that also comes with people. And I feel like saying this now, it's easy to look at it on the surface and be like, it just sounds like a broken record at this point. We're saying the same things how is that going to affect anyone? But what's important is that these things have to be reiterated to make the point impact anyone and everyone who's willing to listen. It's all about accountability for ourselves and for everyone else, especially those who are willing to listen. Conversations like these, topics like these, experiences like the ones we have in order for us to come together like this, it's a beautiful thing. It's a special thing. It's a thing that we have to cherish, that we have to acknowledge, that we have to address, to be able to see ourselves, not for who we were, but who can we be now? What's the potential that we have now within us that for all the changes we want to happen, how about we start with the little gestures before the big ones? It's the little steps before the big steps that makes a huge difference. Starting out with ourselves. It starts with us. And then collectively, this is the beauty that comes out of it. This is the end result that we would want. This is the collective that should be. Right here. And the thing that starts this all, the thing that, that that comes first before we can really under before we can realize that accountability piece, the first thing we have to learn how to cultivate first within ourselves and then with others is trust. We have to learn how to cultivate trust with others, and that means that we also trust ourselves to act in a way that is going to be beneficial for those that we are interacting with. And only once we have that trust, and it's not the trust of, I trust you to do what you say you're going to do. That's, that's reliability, that's not trust. Trust is, I believe that you are going to see me for exactly who I am, and you accept me for everything that I am without judgment. And once we get to that point, then that's something we can build on. That is something we can begin to lay a strong, uh, a sturdy house because we have laid a strong foundation. But the foundation has to be trust first. We have to learn how to build that before anything else or nothing else is going to work. I'm going to say it. I'm a little judgmental. I don't think the solution for me would be to remove that judgment. I think that I have to accept that I could be judged. I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to walk in my truth and stand it and take action on it. I think you're right, though, that we can show people who we are. I think that part of the connection and helping people isn't just the words we say. It is how we walk in that. Let me show you that I am this person. I agree with a lot of what Jason says. And in fact, I, I'm on a lot of the same wavelength as him on the things he's brought up. Um, but because I, I know this part of myself that I am judgmental and critical, I try to accept that that's going to come back at me too and that it shouldn't deter me from helping out and um, being of service and doing my best and being authentic. 
but it's okay if you feel like view that differently. I just, I won't walk around that. I can't help it. It's part of my Virgo, just critical. And I expect before, it to. Uh, before I contribute and say something in this, uh, in this topic, uh, what does Tanisha have to say about it as far as like community? I'm just, I'm listening right now. Um, there's a lot of 